Huawei's self-developed Harmony OS system is developing steadily. The architecture of the underlying system is basically completed. The important thing is to expand the ecosystem. Only with the rise of ecology can Harmony OS truly usher in a breakthrough and cross the line of life and death. The good news is that Huawei continues to optimize the Harmony OS system and has issued new patents in distributed scenarios. The innovation of the Harmony OS system can make the Internet of everything a step further. What kind of patent is this? What is the ecological progress of Harmony OS today? Huawei publishes new patents. The Internet of Things has become a significant trend. Mobile phones, computers, tablets, etc. that are common in life will become an important part of the Internet of Things and will not be used as ports to call other terminal devices. Take Huawei's Harmony OS system as an example. Anyone who has experienced it knows that when Huawei's hyperterminal function is turned on, the surrounding devices that support the Harmony OS system will be displayed on the mobile phone. Drag and drop the icons of these devices to the mobile phone icon in the middle to complete the Internet of Everything. At this time, the mobile phone can be used as a microphone, a remote control, a mouse, etc., depending on what functions the connected devices support. This is just a common function of the Harmony OS system. Huawei is using more devices as calling terminals to reduce its dependence on mobile phones. For example, using a smartphone as a calling port, the exercise state can be monitored in real time when it is connected to the fitness equipment. Harmony OS allows everyone to see the daily life under the Internet of everything. As more and more devices are added to distributed scenarios, users often need to switch between multiple devices and transfer files. If one of the devices appears locked, the unlocking process has to be repeated when you want to use it again. So is it possible to use another device to unlock it? In response to this problem, Huawei has made explorations, provided solutions, and published new patents. On September 20, Huawei announced a new patent of technology called Electronic Device Unlocking Method and Related Equipment. It is mentioned in the patent abstract that this patent can unlock the first electronic device on the second electronic device to ensure the security and convenience of unlocking. Assuming that the mobile phone and the computer are interconnected, when the files on the mobile phone are transferred to the computer for multi-screen collaboration, if the mobile phone is not operated for a long time, the screen will be locked. If it is restarted, you need to enter a password or unlock your fingerprint or face. If this operation is performed frequently, it will undoubtedly bring inconvenience to the user's distributed operation. Therefore, after Huawei publishes this patent, it is expected to realize the unlocking of the mobile phone through the computer, and no additional operation is required. The interconnection and unlocking of mobile phones and computers is only part of the application scenario. As Huawei continues to expand the application scenarios of this technology, it is believed that it can cover most of the smart terminal devices in line. Huawei has been at the forefront of the IoT operating system, and many of its original functions come from Huawei. For example, two accounts with the same account can be seamlessly transferred between mobile phones in a local area network environment. When mobile phone A is about to run out of power when playing games, it will directly transfer to mobile phone B to continue the game. 
虽然在过去的一个月里，大家似乎都忘了黄英的存在，但如今黄英却传递了一个好消息，给我国正在赛场上拼搏的选手们锦上添花。没错，当初在五 G 事件中备受西方国家打压的华为，凭借着手中的三千多份专利又重新杀了回来。据环球网近日报道称，就在几天前，华为公司向国际仲裁机构提起了仲裁，而仲裁的对象便是此前对华为的五 G 技术发布禁令的欧洲国家瑞典。据悉，华为向瑞典提出了赔偿三十亿美元，也就是。一百九十亿的人民币要求，给出的理由也非常明确，那就是瑞典在毫无任何理由和依据的情况下，对华为公司的五 G 技术下发禁令，严重违反了贸易公平性。此事一经报道后，也是迅速引起了国际关注。然就在许多网友都认为瑞典会将西方国家的无赖精神发扬光大时，瑞典的贸易专家竟然出面说了一句让大家都意想不到的话。这位专家表示，瑞典商务部愿意与华为重新进行沟通，并希望用和平协商的方式来处理此前瑞典违反贸易公平原则的问题。换一句话理解，便是瑞典不敢打官司了，一心想要和华为私了。瑞典的回复实在是让人有些意想不到，怎么几天前还那么嚣张狂妄的瑞典，现在就像是变了个人一样。其实回过头来看看瑞典的决定，只能说这是瑞典政府唯一的出路。毕竟西方禁止华为五 G， 其实说白了就是想实现垄断。只要能够对华为进行限制，哪怕短短。两三年，他们就能够成功掌握五 G 技术。可事实证明，西方国家对于五 G 技术的理解与华为的差距可不是一星半点。六十年的华为的五 G， 可能没过半年，他们就与时代脱节了。而另外一边，英国前商务部长在接受媒体采访时也说了一句实话。这位部长表示，英国政府的安全情报部门在经过多次确认后，判定华为设备并不存在任何安全风险。为了调查清楚，英国安全情报部门甚至还在华为公司的总部安插了几个间谍。但在获取内部情报后，所得到的结果竟然没有任何改变。而英国之所以对华为公司进行制裁，其实也与安全毫无关系，是某些国家让英国这么做的。部长的这一句大实话，也再次证明了华为的。一清二白，而这下尴尬的可是瑞典和所谓的某些国家了。至于这某些国家说的是谁，想必没有人知道答案。大家好，今天跟大家聊一聊华为芯片库存真是个谜。你以为用完了，还能月出货一百一十万片？视频开始前，请屏幕前的您动动发财的小手，按住点赞，两秒触发，你们的支持就是我最大的动力。谢谢。从二零二零年九月份开始，华为麒麟芯片就暂时成为了绝唱，没有代工厂生产了，只能靠之前已经生产好了的库存了。所以大家一直在猜测，华为的芯片库存究竟什么时候能够用光？毕竟只出不进，且华为手机销。量又这么高，应该是撑不了多久的。而当时还有大 V 表示，麒麟九零零零系列可能只有八百八十万片左右，完全不够用。但接下来华为不断用事实打脸大家，先是 Mate 四零系列一直销量非常高，在二零二一年二月份的时候，华为就表示 MAT 一四零 PRO 的激活量达到了四百五十一万部，这可都是使用麒麟九零零零系列的手机。后来又发布了 MAT X 二系列，也是使用了麒麟九零零零系列芯片。再后来 P 五零。系列发布，华为还有麒麟九零零零芯片，再到 M A T E X 二典藏版发布，也使用了麒麟九零零零芯片。不仅是麒麟九零零零芯片，似乎还有货之外，华为还发布了其他的很多使用麒麟芯片的手机。这些芯片还有麒麟八二零 E、麒麟九九零 E、麒麟九零零零 E， 还有麒麟九九零 A 车机芯片也曝光了。而按照 C I N O Research 发布的十一月中国智能手机做实验研究报告显示，华为在十一月份还出货了手机芯片一百一十万片，排中国第四，高于紫光展锐，仅次于联发科、高通、苹果。可见，华为的芯片库存真的就是个谜。你以为没有了，实则一直有。一直在出货，谁也不知道什么时候会用完。而近日，华为海思还表示，二零二二年降薪出发。而有博主爆料称，二零二二年海思将会发布全新的芯片，那么也就意味着华为的芯片库存就不会有真正用光的时候。你觉得呢？不得不说，当初华为的备胎计划准备的真充分，一年多了，芯片都还有，不服都不行。换做其他厂商，估计几个月就得贵了。好了，令人兴奋的内容就分享到这里。